Yeah, you guys wanted some farming. Here we are, farming. I appreciate Frank coming over doing this for me. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Welcome back to the channel. So, I'm touching up those red uh, wedges a little more. I like them. I think they look good. They make it pop, make it look a little better in there. But we still got to touch up a little bit of the corners and stuff like that. I'm going to paint them all red. That's what I'm going to do. So, hope you guys approve of that. Otherwise, oh, dang. Otherwise, I don't know. But, uh, alrighty. We're diving into today. We got some truck work. I'm sorry. I know people get all upset that we're still working on trucks. You know, that's part of farming, though. Like, especially if you're farming with older equipment, you got a lot of maintenance to do always. But, alrighty. Appreciate you guys watching along. Let's dive into it. See if we can make this truck look like a full truck today. And what else we get into? Put the cap back on that. We're not done yet. But we got some farming to go do. And it's hot. I did start the generator. But yeah, these are all painted up. So that's good. We might need a coat on some more. But I got the seal back in. That all went in good. Um, the shaft lined up. Got to get the broken bolt out of this one. That's why... I So, got to grind that down, weld it, heat the outside, take it out. But Frank is on his way um, over to mow my field. So I figured I should go over there, give him a hand, get you guys some footage. We'll shut this bad boy back down. If you're new to the channel or don't know what's going on here or just missed past videos. So, I do have grass of my own that I seeded last fall. I got corn of my own that if you watch previous videos, it's uh, well, it's a failure crop. <laughs> Running out of water really uh, made it tough, it, tough to uh, grow anything. And people have said, why don't you bring water over to it? So an inch of water on an acre, I think it's like 20, is it 23 or 28,000 gallons? So let's say it's 23. So four truckloads on 20 acres or on uh, five acres, four truckloads per acre on five acres, 20 truckloads. Then you gotta figure a way to actually water it, spray it out, travel or irrigation, way to dump it off. Um, it's just not feasible at the end of the day. Loading, by the time I found a site to load, and I know they're pumping out of the Concord River, which I, I didn't think you would wanna do that because it's always been told that the, it's high mercury levels, but maybe not anymore. I don't know. It was high mercury levels when I was younger. Here's the Concord River. So, so alrighty. You pump out of the Concord River. You fill tankers. You move it over there. Um, hour a load. By the time you get done messing around, maybe longer. So let's say, let's say two hours a load. So twenty loads. 40 hours it yeah it just doesn't add up so that is the challenging part if there's a water source you can pump out of it but there's no water source over there that you can use so my grass i chopped it off first cutting i got one load off it heavy one load was really surprised by it this is second that is way past due um frank i talked frank into coming over so frank is gonna mow it He's going to bail it, he's going to wrap it, and he has a source to sell it to. I said, come do it. Um, take the feed, sell it. I just want it. I want the field to look good for the rest of the year. Um, and then I'll tell the landowners I'm no longer farming here. Um, since I do not own a mower, a rake, 
any of that. And people have said, oh, you got to buy one. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do for the future. So buying a mower and a rake to mow five acres doesn't make any sense. Um, my family's operation that I have stepped away from, they, uh, they're running out of feed. They're buying feed in, but I'm not, nope. I would chop it and sell it to them like I did previously, but they have no interest in mowing any of their fields even though they're running out of feed. And there is some fields that have feed in it, um, and a lot of people know you gotta mow it in order for it to come back for another cutting and you hope it rains. So right now, at the end of the week, it looks like it's gonna rain again, but they don't even know if it's there. So I'm lucky enough, I, Frank needs feed for his customers, and I have feed available um, for him to mow. Um, there's going to be some lighter and some heavier spots, but, and some not so good spots, but let's see. So he is right in here. Nico's going to get all partied up when he sees Frank here. Look at him. Look at this rig. So he's got the 986 over here. There he is. Look at this. This is some freaking feed. It's laying down a little bit now, but. I am very content on how well this grew. So Frank's over here. He's gonna mow it. We're gonna see if it will dry down. Yeah, go. Come on. Come on. I don't need you running in a mower. Um. So he's got his Gale 2412, and it windrows it up. So we might not have to rake it, but. He's gonna cut into some wetter areas there. So we're hoping it dries down and it's pretty good. I'm gonna walk over here. This is some, there's some freaking feed here. So it's too bad I'm not chopping it because I would have some fun chopping it. Freaking milkweed. Yeah, go, come here. In a few minutes, he's gonna be over this heat. So it's pretty freaking hot. I can't. So this is second cut in drought conditions. Imagine if it actually rained this year. Yanko, come on. Come here. So I'm showing him where the rocks are. Yeah, we got some drought spots, but nothing too crazy. Whew. There's definitely some feed here. So yeah, it gets the drier spots there. So I appreciate Frank coming over doing this. He's uh, He's got a lot of his own stuff going on. But he's got a customer that wants round bales. I guess I should walk down there because there is a rock down there too. Make sure it's visu visible. I am amazed. So this was all the stuff that was flooded this spring. We came in and air seeded it. It actually, it looks really, really good. There's going to be quite a, quite a few bales here. Um, it gets drier where it hits that knoll. And then it goes back into quite a bit of feed, so. <laughs> I am standing on a rock right here. But, yeah, that's some feed out there. Yeah, definitely gonna have some good feed. I don't know how quick it's actually going to dry down for this.
taking the 986 right down. Well, holy smokes, for a second cutting like that? How much horsepower is this? Get it all mowed up. I don't know. This was a blessing. So we'll see how many bales we get out of it. It's going to dry down a little bit. Frank's going to pull his baler over. I'm going to go get my truck and trailer and pick up his skid steer. And we'll keep on farming. Drop Frank off at his place. We're going to swing back. Go grab um, go grab the my truck and trailer. Then I'm going to come back over here and hook up to him i figured i was already over there and uh i wanted to see how wet it was and what our time frame was and that's why i ended up bringing him back down he here dropping him off so he can hook up and get ready to bring his baler over yeah not the best planning by me but it is what it is gives it some time to dry and we're gonna grab some lunch do some things so alrighty. I'm pretty content so far with how the hard work's worked out over there. Because I did put a lot of effort into that field. But, yeah. Threw another coat of red on the wedges. I just want them to look real good. So I did that. I gotta go over here. And uh, throw my truck on. I did actually renew my actual trailer registration. So I did that today. Um, I'll let this warm up I guess throw the trailer on get, make sure all the straps Whew, it's freaking hot in here holy smokes it's gotta be 200 degrees in here look at all the dead flies on the dash so that's cool so we'll let that warm up we'll get hooked up to the trailer oh, yeah the back seat's a freaking mess Yankos playground socks clothes what do we got in here? This toolbox, spare tire. Pop this over, throw it on. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that when the farm moved it. Ah, maybe I did. So I gotta get a new, well, we gotta make a new loop. Where's my clip? This is why I don't like people borrowing my stuff, because they trash it. Alrighty, I'll flip this over. We'll get everything loaded. Yanko's like, I'm done. I just be in the AC. So if you don't follow the Instagram, there it is. Duffy Ag. VMS is the robot. So yeah, every Duffy Ag order, you get a sticker. And if you buy a bunch of stuff, I send a bunch of stickers. So it's cool when people send me my stickers on stuff. So Connor Nesbitt up there at... Uh, Pleasant Valley Farm up in Vermont. He sent me a sticker and it was on the cooler for the pulling team. So, well, they went pulling last night. So, a lot of people do ask what, what's up with the, the little S10 here. It's my brother's. Um, it's slammed. It's got a fake bush in the back of it. My brother actually has COVID. So, yeah, I'm keeping my distance from anything like that. He's been dying laying on his couch for the last four days. So, maybe he's better. Um, yeah, this is his whip, so it's a little five-speed action. He's got his AC over there. Does it start? Oh, I don't really fit in that. We're not going anywhere, buddy. Nope. That's not good, because that's in my way. I guess I can hook up and back out. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah, battery's dead as anything. Usually they pop start it then. There ain't no life to it. But yeah, two uh, hundred and twenty-eight thousand on this bad boy. And it's a it's a rocket. Not really, but it's fun. He bought it kind of as a as a old goof goofy thing, but slammed it on the ground. He does have a Dale Earnhardt edition. Uh step side, 90, 95, 96. I forget what year it is. And uh well, some of it's in the container, some of it's stored elsewhere. It's in the 
it's in the you know build stage my roadside kit I'm gonna move that out of the way He's over the heat. For an Australian originating dog, Yanko sure doesn't like the heat. It is friggin' hot out. 96 degrees, it said. The truck when we first started was at 104. Yeah, let me flip these ramps down. We'll jump in. I need two hands. We'll jump in, uh, Frank's. Last time we ran this thing, it didn't have a window. Alrighty. How do you run this thing again? Frank, your AC work in this bad boy or what? I think it does. I don't even know. Is there a key? You take a key out. The door is shut. That's part of the lock. I don't even know. Oh, power. Start. Okay. Unlock. That's the easy attach. You gonna put the seatbelt on? I think so. Maybe not. Oh, click the operate button. There we go. I'm learning. Frank must have already left. I'm running late. I had a call, so I had some service work. Logged in and fixed some things. Re taught somebody how to reteach cups over the phone for the first time. So that really is mechanically inclined because they've never been around the robots much. Weekend workers. Alrighty. Let's find this bale squeezer and then we will get loaded up. Alrighty. So we're pulling back in here. Frank unhooked from the mower and he's bailing now. Truck gave us a little bit of trouble coming here and I'm a little bit nervous on it. But it's, uh, well, it's a Sunday, so we'll, uh, will we make that? Yeah, we will. Damn. So how many bales he got so far? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know if he's got anything down on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Decent. So, we're making silage bales. He's got the net wrap going on on it. This stuff's just been sitting around. It's going to a beef guy. So, it's still got some moisture underneath it, but holy smokes, it's dried out, but it is almost 100 degrees out. So, sweet. Probably one truckload. Then I'll have to come back and get the skid steer after, but I'll have to show you. I'll get this unloaded and show you. So, I just talked to my boys at ibuildmydiesel.com. They got a diesel shop too. And he's, I'm like, dude, what's going on with this, you think? And uh, I explained it. He goes, are your veins of the turbo getting stuck? Now that you say that, makes sense why it would spit and sputter and act real stupid off the line. And then it would clear up and run fine and then it would do it again. So, I gotta look into that. But, let's see if we can get him unloading a bale. And then we'll get that unloaded. So he's got the monitor he's looking at. Round bailing, you just want to make it consistent, but because it's all mowed in a row, I think he's pretty easy with it. But you load it, and on the monitor it tells you where it's at. So you go there, 
So right now, the net wrap, once he's done going around, he'll wrap it with net wrap. So as you see, now he's kicking the bale out. The kicker pushes it back. Closes back up, and those belts just build the bale that you want. So they're just rolling around, picking up feed. So, Frank, this one was a little bit offset, but we won't hold it against you. So, once we get these back to his place, it's going to get wrapped in plastic because they are silage bales, and then they're great to store and feed out. Yanko thinks he's going to go to the AC.
find out. It's definitely hotter in there than it is out here. Don't worry, you're not missing nothing. So, I might start this back up. It goes hot. Start the AC in the truck and comes back out to hang out with the boys. Frank's on a conference call with God knows who. But we still got some more to bail. Back to bailing. So, our plan is I'm gonna put as many bales on as I can. And then we're gonna have to push these off when we get back to his place. Don't mind the wood, I know. It's been like that since the first load I ever trucked. <sighs> Junk wood. We just gotta put a new piece of board on it. Um, so I got one, two, three, four. What do we got, nine on. He goes, you think we could fit them all on and uh, the skid steer? I don't know about that. 16 bales in the skid steer might be a little bit much, especially if we got some vein issues going on on that turbo. But, yeah. We'll see how many he makes it the rest of this stuff here. We got one, two, three, four, five rows left, and then some short rows down in the bottom. And those rows are pretty thick, so. And he's got those bales. So I left the wetter bale, bales for last so that we just know. Yeah, you guys wanted some farming. Here we are, farming. I appreciate Frank coming over doing this for me. So, my big thing is I want to keep what I have for property of mine for this year. Um, and this is like a four, I think this is a four year lease here, so I've only had it for two. Problem is, yeah, if we go somewhere else, we're not going to farm it. And Frank said, well, maybe I want it, but it's out of his way to do it. But it, if it grows feed like this on a wet year or on a dry year, Imagine on a wet year how it would do. So we'll let him uh, finish up doing that. We'll jump in, grab this bale here, whatever comes out, and then we'll stack everything else so it's easy loading on the next trip. We're getting it. I don't know how many more bales, but I'm gonna try to make them all fit on this load. You know, it is Sunday afternoon. Uh, we're after five o'clock, you know. Outlaw rules. There we go. Popping another one out for me. Maybe. Oh, that one looks good, Frank. That was a that was a good one. There we go. Kicks it out far enough I can grab it. back into it. What, what is that? We got half a bale on the front of the tractor, Frank. Frank, you're, you're cutting into the profits for the day. Huh. I don't think there's actually any profits for the day, but we will see. Now I see what he's doing. That bale that didn't get wrapped, he's uh, pushing it around. That way uh, he can bail it up. Smart thinking. I'm gonna go over there and move that bale out in front of him. A little rebaling action here. Except you can't just slug it into the baler, so that's when it's in big knots like that, that's the hard part. Let's see what I can do for him. Because he had one that didn't unwrap. And uh, 
or didn't wrap. So then moving it would be a nightmare. This is not what you want to do. That was in the bell? No, I I plugged the head up and then I tried to wrap it because it was close enough. Sundays. Rebaling woes. Ready? Yep. Don't put your fingers where you don't want to be. Okay, so. There we go. I'll be honest, I was stacking them too high. And, uh, well, that's 12, 13, 14, right? Yeah, no, 12? That's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 bales, plus a skid steer doesn't make very much sense. So we'll just do one, one on the bottom, we'll get them back, and then we'll come back because we gotta bring the skid steer back. And we gotta bring Frank back down anyways because he's got a service truck and a tractor here. So I take it, he'll unhook the baler, put it on the service truck, we'll take that home, and then we'll unload, and then we'll come back down. So, yeah. And to think, so my father was, he hates the chopper. I'll just throw that out there. And it's not bashed on him, he, he just hates it. Um, he wants to do round bells. To think, me and Frank spent half our day, over half our day, well yeah, just about, we haven't even finished yet, moving bales off five acres. Imagine if we did 150 acres this way. Some people love round bales because you can do them, be gone and come back, and then be gone and come back, and whatnot but it is not my I don't find the efficiency in it especially when we're running as far as we are loading a truck full with chopped fine cut grass makes way more sense than running around moving round bales to me yeah I might throw two more bales on the back because uh I kind of get this feeling it might rain on us and I'd rather have them at least back so what I got going on is yeah truck squats I know that it's dropped two inches in the back. It squats no matter what. We got this little sad bale. We got the bale that never got tied. And then I got four more bales. So I'll bring that back on the next trip, but I'll throw two more on. That way they're back in case it does rain over here. And uh, then they don't get as wet. What am I doing? Doors on this side. Alrighty, so we got two Misfit bale and unwrap bale. And we got 18, 16 on the trailer. So 18 plus them. It's thundering. Of course, it's pouring now while well, we're getting into pouring. Alrighty, change of plans. Something is wrong with my pickup. I think the veins in the turbo are stuck. Um, the boys. It, it feels like that because it will run good and then it will just literally fall on the face, get stuck. Um, the rail pressure against the desired rail pressure, that's all correct. So I got the fuel going to it. Um, yeah, then you stop and start again and it's happy. So I'm thinking, problem is you let these trucks sit around and stuff like that happens. So what I'm gonna do is go unhook this trailer, leave it here, and we're gonna jump in Frank's brother's Peterbilt. You guys are in for a treat. Serious treat. So, we're gonna go over there, and uh, that way, we ran through a little bit of rain, but it's supposed to be clear. That, that way Frank doesn't have to push these off and mess with them, he can just unload them. And we'll take the pickup home, and at some point we'll come back over and we'll get my trailer. So, that's probably the best option. And then I can drive Frank's service truck with the baler back. See, the truck runs fine. 
Yeah. And this is a known thing with Duramax as well, with anything that has veins in the turbo. I guess I should have probably went to fix turbo years ago. It is what it is. Oh yeah. Here we go. No license plate. Does he care? No. We got one on the truck though. think they are oh they're not bad no not bad at all this one 
we're just gonna wrap it and call it good so this peak comes stock with a kta which is a cummins 525 which is 525 horse frank figures they might be six and a quarter it might be 650 it's got some pump work some injectors but it's a it's a sweet ride so as you see it's sitting here she smokes she definitely smokes good Put a single chain on it. It's a weekend. No chains, right? Huh? You just put the park brake on, you're good to go. <laughs> Look at that thing smoke. Yeah. Someday we'll have an R model that is half the truck that that is. Loading up right now, sir. You got to do something about this. You got to do something. Nice people. Nothing else to do with the time, but get your blinkers on. Not my fault where the road is. Could have pulled into the field, but like I said, all we need to do is get stuck and then make for a headache. So he's loaded up, he's going to go up, turn around, and I'm going to pull out in front of him since the baler doesn't have any lights on the rear. And I'm going to take this war wagon back with the baler. Oh yeah. the car well, I'm just waiting on him we got that slow flash ain't nothing ain't nothing fast about this rig but it gets the job done and it is a hell of a service rig so is this him nope that looks like a car too you can tell by the color of the headlights so Yanko sitting in my pickup Put the windows down and water and since it rained and everything cooled down but he's gonna be mad when we get back we'll have to stop get some dinner what time is it now 8 30. so we did 18 bales nah, we're gonna count it as 19 bales and we started at one o'clock or so a little bit after yeah we waited we had to go do some things we ran around some but that is why the efficiency of bales i know we're not set up to do bales and uh yeah, it is what it is, but yeah, and we, we're still trucking, so it's going to be 9.30 before we get back, it's going to be 9, definitely 9, before we get back and, yeah, for 19 bells. Granted, I appreciate Frank coming over doing this, that way I keep my end of the deal up on this property, at least till the end of the year, and yeah, well, we'll see. We made it back. Definitely did not make many friends along the way, but they got the line painting crew out front. Like we rolled in here and like, damn. I gotta go get Yanko out. He's probably mad. He's not that mad at me, people. It's okay. Weather did cool down quite a bit, so yeah, load it up. They, you're gonna charge them rent for parking in the driveway? Must have show up there. Scotty headed out. Frank. We're gonna jump in here. We still got more work to do. Which is, uh, well, we gotta go close up our areas. Come on, buddy. Let me jump back over. Definitely a good call dropping the trailer. Um, driving this. So that top one, I switched it to valve positions or vein positions and I can see that they get stuck so but without a trailer on it's not as uh, rough so
so yeah really should drive this truck some more but i don't really have any drags here they were painting the road so i'm going back road around because they had a huge line but when we pulled in there was a huge line yeah see the back the veins is drops down and then comes back up slowly so it only makes it worse when the trailer is on well a full day of farming a friggin long video so if you've made it this far i appreciate you guys watching along um yeah pretty eventful day my truck is acting up some guy told me i got to do something with my stuff another guy gave me the bird um we got second taken off my hay field it's going to good use it's not just going to sit there and rot away or whatnot and we got some rain so hopefully that keeps growing over there and frank will get another cutting off of that um it helps him out it helps me out it makes everything good and you guys get to see some farming action so plus we got to ride around in scotty's uh peterbilt which yeah i'm a big fan of that truck um it's not an r model it is nice though it's it's really nice those kta motors are i know there's a lot of cat people out there but mm, they they give them your run for their money so but all right we stopped for pizza i'm editing video it is 12 20 a.m which means we got to be up and just about five and a half hours not even a little sooner got merchandise to go out yanko is passed out over there he's stopped packaging boxes so if you haven't done so and you made it this far go hit up duffyag.com the merch store um yeah we got a lot more to come so if you're not subscribed subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one appreciate it